one that I just erased over here, very similar to that one, you have one fraction, one fraction. But then as soon as I do something like this, we go, oh man, dang it. Why dang it? Yeah. It's not that. Darn. I can't just, I can't do this whole process because if you look at that, how would I set up a division problem? Well, you could, you have parentheses, right? But then you can't reciprocate, and that's the whole problem, is that if you can't reciprocate, you can't do division. You following that? So in order to, to actually do the division or to reciprocate, you have to have one fraction so that you can flip it. You can't flip both those. It, it doesn't work that way. So we have to make one fraction out of this. But fortunately, I want you to look at this problem. I would like you to ignore that part of it. Have you done problems like that before in this class? Yeah, absolutely. Can you find a common denominator for that? Yes. Sure, just y squared. Can you make that one fraction? Yes. Hey, look at that. that. That's exactly what we did in 7.4, the, the homework you turned in uh, before this one is you took and you subtract the fractions, right? If you ignore this one, can you do the same thing there? Yes. Sure. You find the LCD, you make one fraction. So essentially, this is three problems in one. What this is, is subtraction, subtraction, and then you have division. That's, that's all it is. So honestly, all I was teaching you today is that. Because you've done, you've done this before, and you've done that before. You just have to remember how to do it. So, while these problems do have a lot of steps, you've done all the steps before. So let's go ahead and let's do this because I need to show you one more problem after this, one more type of problem. Let's work on the numerator and let's kind of ignore the denominator for right now. We're going to treat this like its own problem. Uh, I think someone already told me the LCD for this, but what is the LCD for this problem again? Great. We should be pretty much pros at finding the LCD right now, right? Should be pretty, pretty good at that. Do I need to multiply this by anything? This one? What do I need to multiply that by? Yeah, y over y. Notice that we don't have an equation. Do you notice that we don't have an equation? That means we can't get rid of denominators. All we can do is find a common denominator. That's all we can do. Do you see the difference? It's not like the homework you turned in, right? Homework you turned in, you could just get rid of denominators. You had the equation. That was awesome. Here you can. You go, okay, the only thing I can do is find a common denominator and make that one fraction. But that's what we want to do anyway, right? Just make one fraction out of it. Folks, are you with me on this stuff? Are you waking up today to, to get this? I know it's early. That's Friday. But are you, are you with it? Okay. So let's go ahead and keep going on the numerator. On the numerator, we didn't change the first fraction. Minus, what's the second fraction, please? Okay. On the denominator, I want a little bit more participation from you. Firstly, on the denominator, we're going to ignore this for just a second because this is how we want it, right? Actually, you know what? Maybe we'll keep going on this one just to get it one fraction. So next step. Do you have enough on this to make it one fraction? Yes. Yeah, I've got the I've got the uh, the y squared on both denominators. That's what I wanted. What's on the numerator, folks? Good. Don't put negative x y. We're not multiplying that, right? We're subtracting. So <coughs> x minus y. That's perfect. That's what we want. We have now one fraction on the numerator. Follow? That's great. We're going to leave that alone for now. Um, now the denominator. Let's go ahead and let's do this together again. I want a little bit more participation from you. So can you tell me what is the LCD for the denominator? Great. Do I need to multiply this fraction? Do I need to multiply this fraction? By what? Good, because, yeah, not just x, right? That's not going to work. I'm glad you said x over x. Not just x, because we can't just eliminate denominators here. Why can't we eliminate denominators here? Good. Only when you have that equals can you do that. So yeah, we're x over x, we're trying to find a common denominator. This is the 7.4 stuff, not the 7.5 stuff. This is adding, subtracting, rational expressions, not solving with equations. That's the difference. So here we have the y over y squared. We have minus, x we're going to get, what was that? x squared. Perfect. x over x squared. <laughs> the first one. 
y over x squared. I meant that. <laughs> I would have found it eventually. <laughs> On the next step. So now that we have the common denominator, we're, we're great. We're going to do the y minus x over x squared. Would you raise your hand and feel okay getting that far? Good, I hope so, because that was all old stuff, right? We've done nothing new there. That was just adding or subtracting rational expressions. Now that we have this, can you verify that we have one fraction over one fraction? Yes. Sure. Now it's time to do step two. Now it's time to make that division problem. So what we're going to do, we're going to write this out and have x minus y over y squared divided by y minus x over x squared. Still so far so good? Should be almost home free from now, or from now on. So we have the division problem, what are we going to do now? So let's reciprocate that thing. Oh, and we're almost done. We're going to extend our line, maybe put some parentheses here. Oh, does anything simplify? Yep. The y minus x mm -hmm. How about the x squared and the y squared? Do those simplify? No, they don't. But if you're looking carefully, do you see that this is x minus y and this is y minus x? Mm -hmm. Same exact values, the signs are different. When that happens to you, when that happens, we've had that before, right? Mm -hmm. Factor out a negative. It doesn't matter where, but factor out a negative somewhere. Because if you have that positive x, and this is a minus x, and it's a minus y, and it's a positive y, if I factor out a negative from one of them, I'm going to have a negative out front, but I'm going to have exactly the same thing. Are you with me? So I'm going to choose to factor out a negative from this one, just because I like x is positive. I don't know. I'm that kind of guy. So we're going to say that this is x minus y times x squared, y squared. I'm going to factor a negative out of this thing. Now, watch. Please watch carefully where I'm going to put this negative. It doesn't matter where I put it. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to factor the negative up from here. I'm going to put it up front. No problem. Is that possible? Sure. You're factoring out a negative 1 and you're multiplying it, right? It doesn't matter where it goes. So I'm going to put that negative 1 out front. So when you ask me later, Mr. Leonard, where did that negative 1 come from? I'm factoring negative 1 from here. I am just happen to put it out front. So what we're going to get in here is it's actually going to be x minus y. I'll do one extra step so you can see it. Negative y plus x. Notice that negative 1 will change both of those signs. I'm factoring that out. Are you with this so far? If you can't really see it, ignore the y squared. and That looks perfect, doesn't it? I just have the y squared in the middle of it. It's not a big deal, though. The negative can go anywhere I want it to. And then I'm going to reverse the order on these things. So instead of negative y plus x, I'll have x minus y. Now do you see something we can simplify out? Yep. X minus y. That's great. That's what we wanted to have happen. So this is gone. <coughs> I get x squared over y squared. But what do I miss in here? Negative one. It's got to be a negative. Again, listen, it doesn't matter where the negative goes. OK, the negative was on the bottom. The negative is actually. From, from here, right, we factor the negative out. I put it out front, but it could easily go, I want you to look carefully, it could go here, that's not a problem. It could go here, that would be the same thing, or it could go here. Any one of those three spots, it does not matter where that negative finally ends up. It doesn't matter. Most people put it out front, because they say, well, I want to make the whole thing negative. That's the idea. Okay, the only time it would matter is if you had more than one term, then you'd have to distribute across it. Here, it doesn't matter at all. I will feel okay with that problem. Good, all right. Are you ready to try the last type of problem we have to accomplish in this chapter? You ready? Hope so. I'm going to have to erase this. Are there any questions? <coughs>
No problem. No problem. Problem. Oh. Mr. Leonard, no, why are you ruining this perfectly good problem? It was so nice. It made it so ugly. Oh, negative exponents? Really? Really? But you know what? If you do one little thing, it's literally identical to the last thing we did. Identical to the last thing we did. Uh, there's just one thing I have to show you. So I guess maybe this is the second thing I have to teach you today. But it, it's still review from a previous class, so, so don't worry. Um, it's what to do with negative exponents. I need you to understand something about negative exponents. You can always rewrite them to become positive exponents. The thing that you deal with is a fraction to do that, though. So if you have x to the negative 1, that's equivalent. Mathematically, that's equivalent to, instead of x to the negative 1, 1 over x to the first. That's a true statement. You can change the sign of your exponent, not the sign of the x. The sign out front does not change. The sign of the exponent changes. You can change the sign of an exponent by moving it from a numerator to a denominator or a denominator to a numerator. You just switch the spot. I want you to notice something. Notice that right now, x to the negative 1 is on a numerator. Do you see it? Because I could put it over 1, right? It's on a numerator. It could be over 1. To change that negative exponent, I go, oh, I'm just going to change it from the top to the bottom, from the numerator to denominator. That changes the value of the exponent. Let me be very clear. Changes the value of the exponent, not the value of the term. Okay, that, and that doesn't change. It's still positive x. This is still positive x to the negative first power. That is not a sign thing. That's an exponent thing. Now, we need to try a couple more, more examples for you to really get this, okay? Let's try x to the negative 3. Can you rewrite that to make the x positive? What's going to be on the numerator of our fraction? Denominator? That's right. So we just change the sign by moving to the denominator of a fraction. A couple more I need you to see. This is a big one. It's a big one for you. I hope you're, you're watching this right now. <clears throat> you only move things that actually have an exponent. So right now, is the exponent being applied to the 4? No. no, it's 4 times y to the negative 1. Use your order of operations. The, the exponent is just going to the y. So when I write this problem, is the 4 going to move down or is the 4 going to stay on the top? It definitely is. This is going to be 4 over what? Y to the first. Y to the first. I don't write y to the first. I don't write the 1 there. I don't need the 1 here. I just wrote it so you can kind of see it. But you don't write the 1. Still OK? Yes, no? Yes. You sure? Here's another good one for us. First question, is the exponent going to the negative 3? No. So is the negative 3 going to move to the bottom? No. Is the negative 3 going to change signs? Should it become positive 3? No. no. 